سلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه To introduce Sheikh Abdul Salam Zaif is an absolute honor. Sheikh Abdul Salam Zaif was born in Kandahar in Afghanistan. He was the ambassador to Pakistan during the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan. He was detained. In effect, he was sold to his American captors. He spent time at the prison in Bahrain, and then he was also sent to Guantanamo Bay. The United Nations removed him from the list of terrorists in July 2010, again without charging him. So it is with great honor I call upon Sheikh Abdul Salam Zaif to address you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother and sister, I think our brother and sister they talk about Guantanamo Bay and they talk about prison, they talk about the cage prisoner uh, association. Just I want to talk a little uh, far from that. <clears throat> I think the world want peace. The people want peace. And uh, the Muslims want peace and I would say Afghanistan want peace. The peace and stability, this is our desire, really. I was very young, I was in Afghanistan, I'm not remember the time, what kind of Afghanistan was in the peace time. Just during Taliban time, five year, or four year, we saw the majority of Afghanistan stable. But still there was a problem in the north. But the completely Afghanistan, entire Afghanistan, we did, I didn't see. We want to see Afghanistan. The stability in peace, I think, why this is not coming? What is the real reason? I think, by my understanding, this is something going on which the people they are not satisfied with them. Or the people they are humiliated. Or the people they are deprived from their right. I think when I was very young that Afghanistan was stable. And the king of Afghanistan and all after that the president of Afghanistan, he was moving along, he was drawing along. He was going in the, the, the city alone. And no bodyguard, no guard, no anyone was with him. And that night in Kabul city, he was going to Kandahar, he was going to Herat, he was going to Mazar, anywhere. Stable Afghanistan, the people, they were happy. We never see the, the weapons, we didn't see anything else. The people in the country was, uh, the people was happy, the country was stable. And that time, the Russians, they came to Afghanistan, they invaded to Afghanistan. What was the reason of them? They wanted to go to the, the warm water of Khalij, and they wanted to occupy Afghanistan. And they came with 110,000 uh, soldiers, with 4,000 tanks, when 1,000 um, aircraft and with the big weapons, they came to Afghanistan. In the beginning, when they uh, brought the revolution of Afghanistan, and they cut 60,000 Islamic scholar, tribe elder, and important people, and they killed them all in one day. 60,000 people. My relative was there. And still we don't know where they are, what happened to them. Just we find after the, the occupation, the, some uh, grew in the area, there were thousands and hundreds of people were buried there. And nobody knows who they are because 
the, the, the land was ate them. Just the bone was remained there. And what will be the reaction of the people? For the father, for the uncle, for the elder, for the Islamic scholar. They started jihad against Russia. Afghanistan didn't stable after that. When the jihad finished, unfortunately, the Mujahideen was succeeded in the mission. But the problem came in Pakistan, in Iran, and they were supporting different Mujahideen leaders. In Pakistan, eight leaders. In Iran, seven leaders. Fifteen leaders for one presidential house. When they came to Afghanistan, they became, not became united. Anyone was with arm, they had a party, they have a soldier, they have Mujahideen, they're starting fighting each other until the, the, the Afghanistan was destroyed, the Kabul was destroyed, and the people disappointed from that. The Taliban arrived, they tried five, six, seven years, but the problem came, the United States, they came to Afghanistan, this fighting starting again, till today. I think we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything against Russia. Even after that, we didn't do it. We didn't try for revenge. They killed over three million people. Three million people they killed. Still, we have one and a half million injured in Afghanistan. The orphans, the widows, they are. We didn't try because we wanted the occupation finished. We want stability of the country to remain, to enjoy the life. But the other problem came. And we didn't go to America. Still, I didn't say America. We didn't do anything. They didn't charge anything against any Afghan. The issue of Al-Qaeda was raised in Afghanistan. We wanted to resolve this problem with them. We had three proposals for that. When I was in Islamabad, I was talking with the, uh, the, the American authority, with the embassy, with some uh, high authority people. We wanted, we had three proposals to resolve the problem. But we wanted the dignity of Afghanistan too. They were not accepting. They wanted he will be surrendered or will be killed. And uh, they will allow to the American to go to Afghanistan, to search Afghanistan, to do that and to do that. Eventually, they came to Afghanistan, September 11 happened. I don't know who did that. Still, it is not known who was behind that. And what was this, uh, this problem happened to the United States? I think I, I don't want to uh, uh, talk a lot. But the problem is non-justice in the world. The problem is non-justice. The justice, it is very important. If the people accept justice, there will be no problem, I'm sure. But the justice win to respect the other country, to respect the other person, to respect the other community, and to understand the right of the, the, the people, and to keep the dignity of the people, and to give ourselves uh, convinced by what is your right. This is the big problem. I don't think we will see the justice. Because if the justice is coming, yes, the people are calling for the justice. The power countries, they are calling for the justice. But if they be convinced with the justice, if they say, yes, justice for, for anyone, for all, for our nation, for our country, they cannot go, they're able to go to the other country. They cannot be able to, to, to force the people to do what they want. They cannot be able to go to, to search the, the resource of other, they cannot be able to occupy the other countries. This is the big problem for the justice. I think the cage prisoner in our brother here, all they want justice. We don't want anything from America, from United Kingdom, for European, from, from anyone else. We want justice. And please to be kind with us and, and bring our people to the justice. This is Zulam. And tell this Zulam is continuing in the world. Tell the justice is not coming to the world and this problem will be continuing. The world will be not, not stable, never. One day, fire will be starting from one area 
Tomorrow we'll be starting from other area. After tomorrow we'll be starting from other area. Because the people, they are not able to bring what the, some people wanted. Why? Why I will be obeying to you? Why I will be surrendering to you? Why I will give my right to you? Why I will accept you what you want? And why my country will be occupied by, by you? Why my leadership or some people, some authority will be buying by you to use against me? This is the big problem. And I, I ask from my brother and sister, they have to, uh, to, to know that and have to do struggle for that and peacefully struggle for that. And I think the reason of the cage prison today, this is, this, this is just this purpose, justice for the people, justice for the Chinese. In this problem, we knew that this will be increased because the fighting increasing, the problem increasing, they will be capturing the people, they will be uh, arrested the people, but to be justice. We do, uh, I'm not the person to, 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 to defend from the crime. The crime we don't want. Islam not defending from the crime. But anything they have a the way to, to, to be survived. I think anything will be survived by justice. We want justice. And our brother, they are in Guantanamo. They are in Afghanistan. They are in the other prison. They are here. Uh, in the uh, South Africa, they are in the other jail in Arab countries in very bad condition. And we have to do and help them. If we cannot able to do anything to arise, the wise, today is the wise who condemn that. Because the Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْتَمَّ بِأَمْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا and the people win, the mu'minin, they are not care about the problem of other mu'minin in the world. Rasulullah Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said they are not from us. And we are from Rasulullah Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to stay with them. And for at least we can do that to call for justice and to do what, what we can do that. And also we want from South Africa and from other countries to help us for justice. And this is the only way to survive the world and survive the nation and to bring peace and stability to any country, to any nation. Thank you for listening. This was my humble request for the brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, Sheikh Zaif. I think Sheikh, uh, I just got a little anecdote to share about Sheikh Zaif. When he was uh, arrested and he made dua to the Almighty, he said, it wasn't about release me from Guantanamo. It was about do what is right. If you believe I deserve to stay here, then I will stay here. And if you believe I need to be released, then the Almighty will make that right decision. And I think the people that have had the opportunity to spend some time with Sheikh has been extremely impressed with his spirituality, his humbleness, and his humility. If you just consider what he went through in terms of the torture and the arrests and the interrogations and the detentions, you can't fathom how would somebody be so humble and humble and, and have so much humility when they release. So Sheikh, shukran jazeel and thank you very much. The voice of the voiceless. You know, we're getting to an Orwellian society. Just today at 3 p.m., the British have raised the terror threat to severe because of what's happening in Iraq and Syria. I don't know when last anybody looked at the globe. I mean, look, the Americans don't know where the different countries are, but if you look at where Syria and Iraq is and where the UK is, it's very unlikely you're going to get something landing in the UK if it's fired in Syria. But again, you've got to understand that they try and keep the psyche of the people up. It's that fear. I mean, cage is a huge threat to the government. They close their bank accounts. They froze their assets. They, they made people boycott their sponsors. It is speaking up for justice. And like Sheikh Zaif said, it's all about justice. Cage Africa is for justice. <laughs> Tanalu, Jenna Tanwana Ima, Sanlu, Alehi, Wasalimu, Tasima, Hatta, Tanalu, 
جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما صلوا عليه